Back in 2011, I did a week of guest lecturing at UMSL, and since I was still a young maverick back then, I was content to surf the couch of an old friend who happened to be working there after attending the same university. We were still in our late 20s, so we were holding down jobs and being fairly responsible, but still staying up until 3am on the weekend, playing stoned Wii Sports until we got hungry enough to want to eat, at which point we'd head over to the local 24-hour Walmart to grab whatever looked good. He worked late shifts and almost all my lectures were scheduled for the afternoon, so we stayed up almost every night either just hanging out, watching movies, or playing Wii. Then, on the fourth night of our little ritual, my buddy gets home from work, we smoke up, play some more Wii Sports, and then made our way over to the Walmart to get some food. We're walking up and down the aisles with a basket, throwing in pizzas and wings and whatnot, but then, when we got to the snack aisle, we found ourselves in a minor disagreement over which chips to buy. We basically ended up standing there having some dog brain debate on which ruffles were the superior flavor when I start to notice this dude at the end of the aisle on our right. And I noticed him because he wasn't looking at the chips. He was looking directly at us. You know when you can see someone looking in your direction but you don't want to make any eye contact with them so you kind of just check them out in your peripheral vision but refrain from meeting their gaze? It sounds oddly specific, I know, but I'm sure some of you will know what I mean when I say that. I didn't look directly at this dude, but I also knew for certain that he was looking at us, not just a glance either, he was staring at us. I turned to my buddy and I was about to say, get a load of this guy, when I saw a second dude standing at the opposite end of the aisle, who was doing the exact same thing. Now I didn't end up making eye contact with the second guy, purely by accident, but he only glanced at me for a second before I recognized that he wasn't strictly looking at me. He was looking past me, at the first guy I had spotted, who was standing to my right. And that's when I turned back to the original dude to see if he really was checking out this other guy and not me and my buddy. And lo and behold, he was indeed looking at this seemingly random dude. Keeping in mind that I'm just completely toasted at this time, it took me a second to realize what was going on and that there weren't just these two random dudes staring at me from each end of the aisle. They were having some kind of weird staring competition, and at first I didn't realize just what that meant. But the second the guy on my right reached into his waistband, and I saw this flash of jet black against his bright red boxers, everything I'd been slow to pick up on hit me all at once, and I just remember dragging my buddy to the floor as the shots started popping off around us. I instinctively tucked my head in and squeezed my eyes shut after hitting the floor so I didn't see anything of what happened next. All I heard was the shots, or more specifically, the crazy echoing they made as the sound waves bounced all over the store. Then, while the shots were like wop wop wop, wop wop wop, just this weird sound, I had my buddy in my left ear screaming, what the F, what the F and F and we just lay there until everything finally went quiet, ears ringing, and by that point my buddy had gone quiet too. Probably one of the most terrifying moments of my entire life, right there, thinking one of my best friends in the entire world had been shot dead. Thankfully, he just finally decided to shut up and stop screaming, but that moment of thinking, oh god, please no, probably one of the worst ones in my entire life. I remember just helping my friend up and then we saw one of the employees running for a fire exit and we followed and then the next thing we were in the parking lot hearing one siren turn into two and then double again and then before we knew it there were like half a dozen cop cars all pulling into that Walmart parking lot in twos and threes. The parking lot was just completely filled with blue and red lights as the cops ran into the Walmart through the front entrance but by that point I think both shooters were long gone. I don't remember seeing any blood either. I mean, not that we were looking, but the point is, I'm not sure that they even hit each other. And I read later that you don't even start gushing blood after being shot, that it sometimes takes a second for the bleeding to really kick in, depending on where the wound is. So, maybe they did hit each other and I just didn't see any of it. 
I actually did a disturbing amount of research into small caliber shootouts after that whole incident too, and all under the recommendation of the therapist that Yushai provided me with. They were great providing me with the paid leave, as I'm not going to lie, being in public places was pretty nerve-wracking for a while after that shooting. The thing that really got me was how lucky we'd been not to have been hit in the crossfire. And I'll put it this way. We had to talk to the cops afterwards to give them a description of both shooters, so we got a pretty good breakdown of what had actually happened. I guess these two gangbangers managed to pepper that entire aisle with 14 bullets that went everywhere. But then somehow, by the grace of God, neither of us were hit. It's still something that I think about from time to time. Like whenever I drive past a Walmart someplace, it's guaranteed to pop into my head if I ever have to visit one for any reason. And I always wonder what would have happened if I hadn't spotted the guns in time, or if we hadn't been so lucky in regard to where the bullets ended up. I saw the most messed up thing I ever saw in my life at the York Commons Walmart in Dayton, Ohio. I was near the pharmacy section, like not at the pharmacy section, but in one of the aisles where I could see it, when some guy walked past me who smelled like a dead skunk's asshole. I didn't realize where it was coming from at first. Like he walked past me, I suddenly smelled this god-awful stench and I started to look around to see where it was coming from. I figured the guy might have farted as he walked past me, which isn't anything to start a fight with him over, but still, who the hell does that? But then as I'm looking at him thinking, Jesus Christ, dude, eat a goddamn salad every once in a while, I started to notice how he's not exactly very well put together. In fact, and I hate to sound like an insensitive jerk here, but he had a distinct air of homelessness about him. And so then, out of pure morbid curiosity, I decided to just stay put and see what this weird guy would need from the pharmacy. I'm not particularly proud of myself for feeling that urge, and now that I'm typing it out, it's really hitting me how weird that behavior is from people, and the same thing that makes them just stare at car accidents, I guess, but anyway. I watch as the homeless-looking guy waits in line to talk to the pharmacist and the person in front of him clearly starts to smell him too because she turned around and gave him this look that said, take a goddamn bath already. She then took her pills or whatever and stepped away, and the stinky homeless dude steps up to the counter to ask for pills for his butt leakage or whatever was going on. And that's legit what I thought was happening too. Like I guess I just couldn't conceive what that guy might have been going through. And in my dumb, ignorant brain... Stinky meant poo-poo, and with my total lack of medical knowledge, I could never have guessed just how horrifying the situation actually was. And Jesus H. Christ, was it horrifying. So I'm watching this homeless-looking dude talking to the pharmacist, whose eyes must have almost been watering because of how close he was. I couldn't hear exactly what they were saying, but the dude looked like he was asking the pharmacist questions and the pharmacist couldn't quite understand him. The next thing I know... That guy is leaning down, grabbing a hold of the pant leg and rolling it up real carefully all the way up his boot and past his sock. The pharmacist leans over the counter, kind of looking down at him from what I'm guessing was like a slightly raised platform on the other side. Then when the homeless dude pulls his pant leg up a little more and reaches flesh, both me and the doctor pull back in horror. I'm maybe 15 to 20 feet away, so I can't see this guy's leg up close, but even from that distance I could tell from the color of his leg that he had some kind of serious infection going on down there, and that's when it really hit me. The bad smell wasn't coming from this guy's mouth or armpits or butt, it was coming from this guy's leg wound, which was so badly infected that it must have been rotting from the inside out. I remember the pharmacist like covering his mouth right away after seeing it, like I didn't see him gag or anything, but he sure as hell looked like he was pretty close to. He then talked to the guy in a higher volume, not talking to him in a polite way, but giving him a direct order. You need to go to the hospital right now, he kept saying. I don't know what the homeless dude said back to him, but 
The pharmacist's eyes went all wide again as he repeated himself, Sir, listen to me. You need to go to the hospital right away. This is very serious. And I couldn't just stand by at that point. I suddenly became very self-aware that I was just standing there, watching this all unfold, being one of those insensitive jerks who just stares at the four-car pileup and doesn't offer to help or anything. I walked over, and I did the only thing I could think of. I asked the guy if he wanted me to call him an ambulance so he could get some actual medical assistance for his leg, and he kept saying no, but the pharmacist spoke right over his head like, Yes, sir, you should do that. This man needs an ambulance. I remember reaching into my pants pocket to get my phone, then looking down at its screen, and that's when I caught a glimpse of this dude's leg close up. It was rotten. Like, actually rotten. So rotten that I'm pretty sure that I could either see this dude's shin bone directly at the bottom of the open wound, or there was some kind of muscle membrane or something that was pale and I mistook it for bone. Then, as I was looking at it, I really started to smell it again, and it was so bad that I had to cover up my mouth and nose with my shirt to stop myself from gagging right in front of the dude. The guy kept telling me, please don't call anyone, but I just totally ignored him. I don't know if he had drugs on him, or if, like a buddy of mine suggested, he had outstanding warrants or something, but there was no way in hell that I was about to walk out of that Walmart without at least having done something for the guy. I guess I felt guilty for my first thoughts being, who's the stinky jerk, and then realizing, oh, shoot, this dude might be dying right in front of me. So I figured the least I could do is call the guy an ambulance so I could walk out thinking that I actually did something, or tried to do something anyway. But in the end, he stopped protesting and just walked out. The pharmacist and I were calling after him like, hey, you can't just leave, but he did. He just up and walked out like he was fine. But he was definitely not fine, not according to the pharmacist anyway. He said it was a miracle the guy was even on his feet, that he had to be on some serious painkillers or have an addiction to numb all that pain because a regular person would literally be screaming in agony if they were walking around with that kind of wound on their leg. The pharmacist said the guy would probably die soon, at least if he didn't get to a hospital as fast as possible. I want to hope that he did. But a part of me just kind of knows that he didn't, and that he was just one of those homeless dudes that dies, disappears, and doesn't even get so much as a funeral to mark their passing. This might sound kind of funny to some people, but I can promise you it was not funny in the moment. I used to work at Walmart, and... One day, I'm walking the aisles when I suddenly spot this lady opening up a bottle and chugging the contents. Now, this made zero sense to me at the time because I knew the store pretty well and the place where the lady was standing was the place that I was pretty certain we kept all the hot sauce. But then, she couldn't have just been chugging the hot sauce, could she? Well, she was. I walked up to her and I said something like, Excuse me, ma'am. And just the sight of her must have had my jaw dropping. She had bloodshot eyes, tears streaming down her face, and she was wheezing, or like breathing really heavily from how bad it must have been burning her mouth. She was sweating, gasping, and it was just a really crazy thing to see. Like, people have joked when I've told them the story saying, oh, she just loved hot ones, or whatever. But when I say that this woman was trying to hurt herself, with hot sauce, I mean that legitimately. She kept drinking and drinking. I called security and by the time security came, she was almost bent double over in pain from what it was doing to her stomach. Security just sort of dragged her outside and she just laid there until someone called 911 and then the EMTs came and took her away. I used to think about her a lot, like hoping that she was doing better and I still do. She seemed very sick in the head. About ten years ago, I was laid off from my job and I needed money to pay the bills, so I swallowed my pride and I took a job at Walmart until I could find something in my preferred field. 
I ended up working in the lawn and garden section, which is actually fun when you get to play with plants all day long. However, I wasn't aware that Lawn and Garden also does all of the holiday setup, as well as placing said holiday product on the floor. Fast forward to a week before the public school systems were in session, I had a cart full of notebook paper, pencils, trapper keepers, all that kind of stuff that I was trying to put on the shelves when a sound ripped through my eardrums that was similar to ones that are typically only heard on the Discovery Channel. The best I can describe it is cats being lit on fire by their tail and being chased by rabid wolves. I looked around to figure out just who in the hell was being murdered in the store when I saw him. There was a kid, about eight years old, who looked as if he was desperately trying to become Jabba the Hutt, and the kid was succeeding. It took me a minute to figure out what the hell was going on in my aisle until I realized that this kid was throwing a fit because his parents wouldn't buy him three different trapper keepers, one of which was Hello Kitty. Normally, I'd just shrug and say, typical Saturday in Walmart, but no. This little brat realized that his dad wasn't paying attention to him and was instead focused on his siblings. This pisses the kid off even more, since he howls with rage and here's where it gets insane, kicks his what looked like eight months pregnant mother directly in the stomach. And to her credit, this lady didn't womp this spoiled little monster's butt right in the aisle. No, she instead collapsed on the floor and had to be taken away by paramedics. And then in the commotion, that little brat took that as a sign that he could have all the trapper keepers he originally wanted. I watched this whole thing go down, and as the dad watched his wife get loaded into an ambulance, not one iota of, you're gonna get it later, came from him. Instead, the little brat that kicked his mom started crying about being hungry and wanting chicken nuggets, which the dad then took him to go get, I think. And I swear, it's places like Walmart where you see the lowest of humanity sometimes. It's not even the place itself, it's just everyone goes there. And I saw and dealt with some amazing customers during my time there, but I also saw the absolute dregs of society too. And sometimes if it didn't do some terrible things to my soul. I worked at Walmart several years ago when a co-worker's ex-husband came in with a gun. He owned a failing business and had committed insurance fraud three times. The wife said she had no idea he was committing arson and filed for divorce. The ex-husband was angry at her for testifying against him and he asked her why she wouldn't talk to him. She asked him to leave and then he told her he had a gun. For some reason she ran into the women's restroom at the front of the store to hide. He followed her there and had her on her back while he sat on top of her, straddling her. He was crying and saying his life was over and all this. Another person happened to be in the bathroom, but he let her go unharmed. They evacuated the entire store while the cops set up. And the cops finally said that they were coming in just to talk, and he shot at the cop and missed, and the bullet went through the door. He said he knew that he was going away for the rest of his life for shooting at a cop, and he said he was sorry and he loved her and then shot himself in the head while still sitting on top of her. They had to move his body off of her to help her get up and out. She wasn't harmed, but she's still in therapy to this day. And we were pretty good friends at the time, and it still scares me because I would have never have thought her husband was capable of that. I was helping direct traffic at an event in a Walmart parking lot when I started to hear a man shouting about 25 to 50 feet away from me. I couldn't really tell what was going on so I kept directing traffic a few more minutes until I realized his family had locked themselves in the car, seemingly in fear of him and he was intoxicated, cussing and screaming, not only scaring them but the hundreds of people and families walking through the parking lot. I calmly approached him and told him I understood that he must be going through a stressful situation and I asked if I could help resolve things. 
He looked at me with this fire in his eyes and told me that I better not get in between him and his family. I tried to reassure him that it wasn't my intention, only to try and calm him down and I just wanted to help. Things escalated verbally, but I was able to guide him about 20 feet away from the family car while we were talking. The wife slash girlfriend saw this as her opportunity to drive away, but before she could, he jumped on the hood of the moving car. I had no time to think and just jumped in front of the car. Thoughts of her plowing other families over while driving with him on the hood flashed into my head and I just reacted in that moment. She stopped and I talked him off the car while he threatened me more and radioed for help. Should have sooner, but things escalated quicker than I thought they would. In the next 10 minutes, before help arrived, he got one of the doors open and was trying to pull a two-year-old boy out of his car seat while I tried to pin him into the open door and prevent him from getting the boy. Two random dads saw what was happening and helped me keep him corralled until my help arrived. I let them take over so I could go back to directing traffic, which went a little haywire in the preceding 15 minutes. Before long, I heard yelling behind me and saw him hit one of the other security guards and then two guards and the guy all grabbing onto each other in some scuffle. I ran over and we took and held him down firmly but safely for about 15 minutes until police arrived and arrested him. I received a subpoena, but he pled before the trial and I never learned what happened before or since. I just hope that family is okay. I was guarding at a Walmart that had been gutted and used to store construction equipment for a construction company. I literally just sat in my car and circled the building and didn't have to answer to anyone or have anyone check up on me. One night I'm sitting in my car facing the building and out of the shadows, a woman walks towards the front of the building. She had no shoes on, short pajama style shorts and a thin white spaghetti strap top. It was like 37 degrees so immediately I'm like what the hell and watch her for a while. I noticed that she was very alert and checking her surroundings, constantly like her head was on a swivel and then all of a sudden, she darted behind a concrete column at the front of the building. A Honda had just pulled into the lot and she noticed it before I did and she was keeping the column between the car and her and the car was creeping slow like they were looking for someone and as it drove past her, she shifted so they couldn't see her behind the column. At this point, alarm bells are ringing in my head and I get out of the car. The Honda leaves the area and she sees me. She knows I see her and she starts running over. I ask, do you need help? Are you okay? What's going on? She just tells me to call the cops and she's scared, crying. I don't know how to describe it. It's not crying from sadness or anything. It's like pure terror, tears, and gasping. I start calling the cops and that Honda rolls back into the parking lot and instantly she's like, oh, never mind, it would be better if, if you don't get it involved and starts walking to the car like she's just been found out. After that, she got in the car and that was that. It's been like three years and I still think about it. Was it human trafficking? An abusive boyfriend? I have no clue but my blood runs cold when I stop and remember about that night, and I hope she's okay, but I doubt it. One time, I was at a tailgating party in a Walmart parking lot, and the place was pretty crowded. Dude comes up beside me and isn't really looking to get a drink, he's just kind of looking at me really intensely. Really big guy, probably 6'3", 220 plus pounds of just muscle. I'm like 6 foot, maybe 160, rail thin. And he nonchalantly starts talking about how his favorite thing on a night out is just to punch an absolute random person and see their lights go out, laying on the floor. He says he does it when he's coked out, which he insinuated he was and just goes on and on about the thrill that he gets from knocking someone out who he doesn't even know. The things he said were probably more graphic and violent than I remember, and I was just like, what the heck, dude? I need to get out of here. 
I'm not sure how the conversation turned out, but he mentioned that he was out on the town because he went through a breakup. And he said, are you my bro? I was like, yeah, sure, man. We're buds. And I got my drink and said something like, cheers to you, to all the fish in the sea, or something like that. And I got back to my friends and kept that guy in the corner of my eye all night long. I work at Walmart and we tend to get a lot of interesting customers. One day a man came in and I, being a cashier, went to serve him. He stood at the counter for about 10 seconds without looking at me and then proceeded to run out of the store. Cut to about two hours later, I'm cleaning the men's bathrooms when he walks in. I apologize and say that I'll just be a moment to finish up my cleaning. When I went to exit the bathroom with my cleaning supplies, he blocked the doorway and wouldn't let me pass for about 10 seconds again. He then spends half an hour in the bathroom before exiting the store without purchasing anything. An hour later, you guessed it, he's back again, pacing back and forth at the front of the store, and he ends up buying like $30 worth of stuff and then leaves the store without it, and just never returns. Several weeks later, I'm waiting for my bus. I live very close to work. When he sees me, I see him, and he walks up and stands next to me for that 10 minute wait. When the bus finally arrived, he turned around and walked away. Now as a young woman, this scared the crap out of me, particularly when I drove past him getting arrested a couple of weeks ago, surrounded by police officers. There was this random man who happened to be outside when I was visiting a Walmart a few years back. He was disheveled, short, I want to say maybe 5'1 to 5'3, bald, mumbling to himself and walking very funny. When I got to be about 3 feet from him, he turned around and knocked out the lady directly behind him. A perfect stranger on her phone and he knocked her out with one solid punch to the face. Then he ran up to a guy who was easily a foot taller than him and tackled him to the ground and began headbutting him and yelling, Can you feel this now, Mary? Can you? It was psycho. And by the time the cops showed up, this guy was foaming at the mouth from yelling, covered in blood, and two other people, two older men, had been assaulted by him. It was so nuts. The guy was obviously on some pretty strong stuff, but... I've never seen anyone before or after that just lose it quite like that. I used to work for Walmart corporate, and we all had to go to this event one time. We all met up in Miami and took two 15-passenger vans to drive up to Central Florida, both full. We took US-27 known as Okeechobee Road. At some point before sundown, we stopped at a McDonald's for dinner. My buddy from back then was there too. And I remember chatting it up with him. Just typical teenage stuff. And I remember at one point we were in separate vans, and we started loading up when one of the instructors decided that my buddy and I should switch vans. I was confused, but sure, didn't matter to us. I sat in his seat and he went to the other van and then last minute, the instructors decided that we should switch back to how we were. And I never quite figured out why, but it saved my life and ended my friends. A couple of hours later, it's dark, US-27 has no lights at the time, and their van was behind us the whole time till it just suddenly wasn't. We were six miles from our destination when we got a call from the driver of the other van. We were in an accident. We're hurt. We sped back at like 100 miles per hour, only to be met by a literal wall of semi-trailers blocking the two-lane highway. We had to drive on the shoulder to get past them. As we went around these trucks, I noticed that they all had their headlights on. Illuminated on the road was my friend's body. His eyes were open, but all you could see was the whites of his eyes. 
His arms were very obviously broken at odd angles, but most alarming of all, he was torn completely in half. To say that we were beside ourselves is an understatement. The van was laying on its side, completely mangled, and the rest of the passengers were bloodied and bruised, but aside from a broken arm, they were generally okay. According to the driver, they hit wet pavement on a curve, lost control of the van, and it flipped. My friend was wearing a seatbelt, but he was pretty skinny. He slipped through the belt and broke through a passenger side window. He flew approximately 30 yards over the grass median and landed on the opposite side of the highway. According to the driver, she was trying to climb out of the flip van when she witnessed my friend trying to push himself up with his arms. An SUV was driving on the lane that he was laying in. It hit him and killed him instantly. The SUV did not stop. They never found out who hit him. And it sticks with me 17 years later. I try to be grateful for the life I have. I was going to be in his seat, and happenstance saved me. I struggled with feeling like I deserved it. He was one of the good ones, and I was always struggling with my inner demons. And I miss you, man. I hope you're all right, wherever you are. Rest in peace. I had a stalker situation. I used to work at Walmart and while I was working one time a guy came in and just said hi. He knew my name, I sort of recognized him and he said he went to high school with me. And then it clicked and I remembered seeing him back in school. We talked for a bit and he seemed nice enough. The next day I got a friend request on Facebook. I added him and didn't think anything of it. Now, a few days later, some of the guys I'm friends with on Facebook sent me a message asking who he is because he's sending them all friend requests. I never kept my phone number on Facebook, but he somehow got it. He started texting me and calling me. He got my email as well. Sent me this long letter about how he always loved me, wants to marry me, and how perfect we were for each other, asking who all the guys are I'm friends with, and that it should just be me and him. It really took me off guard since we only talked for the first time a few nights ago. I responded nicely and I tell him that I have a boyfriend and that it seems like he's a nice guy but that I just didn't feel that way about him. That we just don't know each other well enough. And that was a bad choice of words. He starts showing up everywhere I am. Classes, when I'm shopping, eating, everywhere. If I don't see him, he sends me emails about if I enjoyed this here with this person, and I finally tell him that he needs to just leave me alone. He sends me this long-winded email about how I'll pay, how I just didn't give him a chance and he will make me give him one, and what a selfish bee that I am. Really creepy, just terribly mean stuff. About how he knew my schedule and my routine and there was nowhere that... I went that he couldn't find me. I eventually ended up calling the police and actually getting a restraining order, and he did get into some trouble, but not very much. I was scared for a while after that, but thankfully I've not heard from him since. So this short story is regarding a former co-worker of mine at Walmart who seemed as though he took extreme pleasure in violence. You see, one time, he put on a football helmet and ran into the break room and just head-butted me extremely hard with it, and I actually ended up with a concussion. And when I told my manager, he confronted me at work. He shoved me down, got on top of me, and I kept screaming and kicking at him, telling him to get off of me and that I couldn't breathe. Eventually he did, but Jesus Christ, I actually thought he was going to kill me. Thankfully he ended up getting fired, but I spent the rest of my time working there wondering if he was ever going to come back and finish the job. I used to work at a Walmart where the managers didn't care about their staff. I've since learned that they were fired, so that's something. 
but the customers were always the worst part. We had this one regular, pretty huge guy who would consistently cross boundaries with me. He would try to grab me whenever he was with his buddies, and he would grab my butt, even after I straight up yelled at him and even slapped him once. I begged the managers to ban him from the store, but that didn't happen. The best that they would do would kick him out if he went too far, which usually involved him grabbing me in some way. He was always free to return the next day, though, because he was a good customer. One Saturday, I was on my cigarette break in the alley beside the store when the jerk sneaked up and grabbed me around the waist and started to drag me backwards. I immediately went into fight or flight mode and smashed my head backwards into his face and ended up breaking his nose pretty badly. And when he dropped me, I laid on the ground and kicked up into his groin several times. When I had a moment to think and realized who it was who had attacked me, I took my lit cigarette and I put it out on his arm. I think I did a fair bit of screaming and I spat on him as well. I was just so angry and afraid that I don't have a very clear memory of the rest of that day. I guess the security guys arrived at some point and the cops were called. When the cops came I gave my statement and he did get arrested. I quit that job and never returned to that crappy place. I never got a chance to find out what happened to the guy or even what his motivations for grabbing me were because I moved to Austin a few months later. It was late at night and I was driving out of a Walmart parking lot. On the way out, someone tried to cut me off when I was making a turn which almost resulted in our cars crashing. The other driver was very upset and started following me, flashing his lights to blind me. Then, they forced me to park my car and blocked it. He got out with another guy, grabbing a screwdriver and tried first to open my car door which I locked just in time and then he tried smashing my window. I wasn't so foolish as to get out of my car and risk being stabbed so I reached for my phone and started calling a few of my buddies who lived nearby. Some strangers started running over too. The guy with the screwdriver and his friends saw that they were going to be outnumbered and quickly escaped in their car. Overall, it was a very scary experience and I'm pretty sure if I hadn't locked my door in time, I would have had a huge screwdriver plunged directly into my neck. I used to work with this guy at Walmart who I refer to simply as Josh. Josh was insane. I don't mean he was a really bad drunk and did crazy stuff or that he was big and a lover of kicking people's butts a lot. He was all of those things, but so, so much more. Josh used to take full packs of Carissidin nearly daily, at least that's what it seemed like. He took it and would turn his entire mouth red and... He would be at school, high as balls, and he sewed his lips shut for a Halloween party with a needle and thread and bled all over the place, and he shot himself on more than one occasion, once in the leg with a rifle just to see how it felt, and the other time with a handgun in his head in an attempt to take his own life. It didn't work, he's still alive and almost exactly the same, no effects other than now he gets seizures, and he had butted a cop. At one time I lent him a CD and he accidentally broke it. He came back to me apologizing and whipped out this obnoxiously large wad of money from his pocket that was just thick with hundred dollar bills and handed me a fresh hundy from it. Now I'd like to take a break in these little bullet points about his life to say Josh was a mentally disturbed individual, this is true, but he was actually a good guy in his own way. He liked me a lot actually. Anytime someone would mess with me and he'd hear about it, he'd instantly get incredibly mad and want to kill them. To some, he was a violent psychopath. To others, he was a violent, deranged, messed up human being with an unmistakable sweet side. He was completely delusional. He used to tell me about how the doctors took pieces of his body out and replaced them with alien parts to see how he'd operate with them. Honestly, and I'm not joking, I could write a novel based on my experiences with this weirdo. 
I avoided hanging out with him because I knew that he ended up getting me in some serious trouble, not to mention that he scared the crap out of me. But he always seemed to go out of his way to try and hang out with me, chat with me, whatever. And I have no idea how he managed to hold down that job, but he did, and everyone knew that he was nuts. Years after, he added me on Facebook, and he still sends me the occasional message and always buys my music when I release something new or comes to shows. He's a good dude to have on your side, I think, but he's seriously terrifying. The single worst shift I ever worked during my time at Walmart was on Mother's Day of 2015. I was working customer service and handling the day as best as could be expected on a Sunday holiday where the employees were mostly female mothers. That meant we had 13 call-outs and 5 no-call no-shows and resulted in us having just 5 overworked women to handle the whole Sunday. Lines were long, but we had zero help and management couldn't spare anyone. At one point, I'm getting yelled at by a blue-haired old woman about the lines when I get the call that made me regret waking up that day and coming to work. Hey, see that kid in the orange shoes to your left? Someone asked me over my radio. Stop him. I did as I was told, but also asked why. Like if the kid's mom was looking for it or something. And then I hear in reply, he crapped himself and is tracking feces all over. I'm trying to find his mother on the cameras right now. And my heart sunk. The kid was absolutely covered in it and I felt horrible for this little guy, but I had to do everything in my power not to puke as I led him over to the customer service desk. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes went by and I saw a head of security approaching customer services. He'd been looking for the kid's mom, so I asked him if he'd found her yet. He just walked right past me without a word with this weird kind of zapped out look in his eyes. The second security guy, the one who had been watching the cameras, he came out to watch the kid while I went to mop up all the poop. And there was a lot of it, so it took me a while, long enough so that the next time I walked by the front of the store, I saw a head of security talking to a cop outside. The kid's mom had left him in our toy section to try and distract him before she went into our bathroom to shoot up the heroin overdose that killed her. And I don't think that she meant to end her own life, just in case that came out kind of wrong there, and I think it was accidental. But yeah, she was dead on the scene in our bathrooms. The paramedics took her body away, and one of the cops stayed with us as we watched the kid until CPS showed up. We washed him down, cleaned him up, gave him some new clothes, and then off he went with the social worker. I wanted to quit after that shift more than any other I ever worked, but I stayed. For a whole nother year actually, and, and it'd take a hell of a lot for me to go back to a place like Walmart for employment. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday at 7pm EST. And there are super fun live streams every Sunday and Wednesday nights. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official or over email, and you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks for members of the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all of these stories and big compilations located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, you like oiled up, leathered pants wrestling. <laughs>